Hi everyone, thank you for being here. In this video, I want to draw your attention to something that I think people tend to skip when they read the news until it is too late. United States crop futures, wheat, soybeans, corn are surging across the board as drought conditions spread in the Midwest and in other parts of the United States. In other regions of the world, things are not looking much better as well. The forecast predicts that drought will persist in the coming weeks. Not many people are talking about it yet, but we are just several months away from the harvest season. And this is bad news. It means prices for these products, as well as their substitute products, will rise. Higher food prices are coming because the United States food production is going to be way below normal levels this year. And with prices being already elevated, this is very bad news for many people. By the way, if you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel on YouTube and Rumble, like the video so more people see it, and check out my newsletter available on Substack. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, wheat is grown in Kansas, eastern portion of Colorado, Montana, and North Dakota. There are reports that this year in Kansas, farmers are expecting the worst wheat crop in 60 years. So this year's wheat harvest in Kansas is shaping up to be the smallest since 1957. It goes on to say, this will go directly down the chain from farmers to consumers at the grocery store. Kansas flour mills will likely have to buy grain grown in Eastern Europe. With the destruction of the Kahovka Dam in southern Ukraine, the area around the dam was mostly used for agriculture and accounted for a significant portion of grain production in the country, and then add to that a shaky grain deal between Russia and Ukraine, so buying wheat in Eastern Europe might be a bit challenging. And we will discuss that in more detail in just a minute. The forecast predict that drought conditions in the Midwest will persist at least for the next three months. The United States Department of Agriculture estimated 57% of the domestic corn crop and 51% of soybeans are dealing with drought conditions. So it seems that the United States may need to purchase grains from other countries to meet its own consumer demands this year. Grains are not the only issue for the United States, however. U.S. corn prices are expected to soar because the Corn Belt is being hit by the worst drought in 30 years. The orange harvest in Florida in 2023 will be approximately 56% smaller than it was in 2022. The size of the U.S. beef cow herd has fallen to the lowest level since 1962. And approximately 90% of Georgia's peach crop for this year has been wiped out. Drier conditions are also the case in Russia and Ukraine, the two countries that have historically been in the top five wheat exporters and accounted for approximately 32% of all exported wheat in the entire world. Australia forecasts that its wheat production will also fall by a third this year due to the development of El Nino, which typically suppresses rainfall. Canada, the world's third wheat exporter after Russia and the United States, is also experiencing drought conditions. So as you can see, in a couple of months after persistent drought, when these countries, including the United States, start harvesting their grains, we will most likely start feeling the impact of the rising prices and possibly even shortages. Eastern Europe would be an ideal producer to buy wheat from, but that is going to be a challenging task as the geopolitical conditions become more and more escalated. Ukraine has a grain deal with Russia that allowed six cargo ships depart the Black Sea port on a daily basis. Once they started running into issues with that deal, Russia made a decision to allow passage of only one cargo ship a day. And then in the beginning of June, it became clear that even that might soon come to an end. But if the grain deal is extended, once again, Ukraine's harvest this year is not going to be anywhere close to what it was before 2022. According to the map that was published by USDA, wheat production is focused in central and eastern Ukraine. Those dark green areas are where the front line effectively is. That's where the worst fighting is taking place. Needless to say, there can be no active 
agricultural activities now or in the near future. So as you can see, it's truly not an overstatement that wheat and other substitute grains prices such as rice, buckwheat, corn will increase as it becomes uh, more obvious that the harvest this year worldwide is far below previous levels while consumption and demand remain stable. Developed nations would certainly feel the impact. The price tag will become higher, but then we have more resources here at our disposal. The nations that will be hit the hardest with the shortage of grains are the developing nations that have no means to fight hunger. According to the latest report that was issued by the United Nations, millions of people are facing acute food insecurity. The report concluded that the number of people facing acute food shortage in 58 countries and territories in 2022 was 258 million people, and this was the highest in the seven-year history of the report, which signifies a deteriorating trend in global acute food insecurity. In contrast, in 2021, 193 million people in 53 countries and territories faced acute hunger. So the figure for 2022 reflected a 34% jump within just one year. And of course, it is absolutely clear that 2023 is going to be much worse due to the drought conditions and the ongoing war. The countries that will suffer the most are developing African nations, such as Somalia, that is already dealing with war and bombing bombings, is destroyed without any proper chance of reconstruction in the near future, Benin, Laos, Egypt, Sudan, another ongoing military conflict there, Republic of Congo, Senegal, and Tanzania. A quick reminder to check out our sponsors today, ExpressVPN. It is my recommended VPN or virtual private network service for secure online browsing. It is so easy to download and to install. I use it every single day. We have virtually all of our data stored online, passwords, banking information, medical records, literally everything, which is why we must be able to protect it. Go ahead and claim your three full months of free service when you sign up using the link shared in the description below. Thank you for watching the video. Give it a like and consider sharing it. Subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for my next one. And if you enjoy reading, I recently started a newsletter that you may find interesting. I'll see you in my new one tomorrow. Take care.